Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. It's time to get back on a couple of projects that have been on hold since I've been working on that MCO CNC5 lathe. Um, the MCO Turn 140 here. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, get the axis motors. I've been waiting on some new servo motors. I've got them. They're from DMM Technologies. They're 750 watt NEMA 34 frame servo motors. Um, have a standard half inch shaft and then they have uh, the mounting pattern for a NEMA 34 motor. That's what was on this before. There were stepper motors on the MCO Turn 140 before. So these motors will bolt right on uh, in place of the original stepper motors. Now the one thing that I do have to do is I'm going to use the original pulleys. Again these are 750 watt AC servos. Um, the original stepper pulleys are 3 8 inch bore so I've got to bore them out to uh, half an inch so I'm going to take care of that and get them put on here and then uh, get these motors mounted up and get the cables run through the the uh, chase to the operator control panel because that's where the the Dyne 4 AC servo drives are going to reside along with uh, the motion controller. So I don't know, with any luck maybe we'll see this machine move for the first time in a lot of years. So uh, anyway, I'm going to get these bored out, put on the motors, and then we'll come back and get them installed on the X and the Z axis. Okay, I got the pulleys bored out and mounted on the motor. But one of the things I found out, this is the motor mount plate, it's the same on the X and the Z axis. And you'll see the opening here, it's kind of been nibbled away. It doesn't fit the spigot on the uh, DMM AC servo. So I've got to open this hole up to fit the spigot here. So I'm going to do that on the mill. Bring you back when I get that taken care of. Here's a few pictures of it. Okay, let's go ahead and get the uh, motor mounts back on now that they've been machined. They have uh, proximity sensors on there, which I would assume that's what uh, was used for homing the machine previously. I'm going to go ahead and leave them on for now. Um, I can always remove them if I don't use them, but it doesn't hurt to leave them. So I'm just going to leave them for now. Okay, go ahead and drop in the motor. I've already kind of aligned the uh, And you'll notice there's a counter a spring here that counterbalances the turret. So I have this thing, if I take that off, that spring comes off. So I did as I locked it with a pair of vice grips so it didn't fly off when I took that plate off. Okay, so that's the x-axis. Now I'm going to get down here and do the z. Okay, I'm putting the proximity sensor back on the z-axis. Okay, 
and I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to go ahead and put the motor on it first. Okay, let's get the Z axis on. I went ahead and re-drilled and tapped the motor mount plate for some quarter 20 bolts that are a little bit longer instead of the metric bolts that were on it before. Okay, mount it up. Now I'm gonna check the uh, pulley. Get you in there so you can see the Z. Okay, you'll see both the axis motors are in place. The Z is in place and the X is in place. So um, 
What I need to do now is I'm going to program the DIN4, DYN4 servo amplifiers to 2,000 lines per rev, which will give us 8,000 lines in uh, the software. So I'm going to get that going now. Okay, guys, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to program the DYN4 uh, servo drives. Um, I'm just powering them up with 120 volts and um, just setting up the uh, gear number um, so that uh, I can configure the Centroid Acorn um, to uh, control them and put them in the step and direction. I'm not hooking up any motors or encoders or anything like that, I'm just powering them up. Now I've done other videos on uh, DYN4 uh, drives from DMM Technologies and how to wire them up to Acorn, whether you use their harnesses or you use direct wiring um, using uh, Centroid's DYN4 schematic, so I'm not going to go over all that. You can go back and find uh, the videos and review them. I'm just doing a quick setup here so that uh, we can move the X and Z axis on the Emco Turn 140. So it's just a really brief overview. Again, um, just, uh, just powering up the drives with 110 volts, line one, line two, black, white, and then I got jumpers over to R and S just to get power to it. You'll see there's an error because there's no encoder and no motor, but and then this is the communications cable. Um, it's USB on the other end to the, to the uh, computer. Um, you can see that right here. So let me pull you over to the screen. Let's get it set up and going. So we start up the DMM DRV software and we've got to connect to the drive. Um, we can do a detect. And it says possible COM port on COM3. And I know that's what it is, but I just wanted to show you the detect so you know which one to pick. So I'm going to go to 3. I'm going to set the COM port. Successful. And you'll see down here it's connected. I'm going to go into servo setting. We're going to select DYN4. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into gear number. Set that to 2000. And I'm going to set it into pulse dir, which is step and direction. And I'm going to read to the drive. All parameters, well, actually, I read. <laughs> I read from the drive. So what I want to do is, so I'm going to change this to 2000. And what that does is once you set this up, and then an acorn will set that, um, it will take 8,000 counts to turn the motor one revolution. And then we go up here to pulse dir, which is step and direction mode click on that and then we go over here to save all saving parameters all parameters saved and that's it that's all I'm gonna do so this way it'll respond to step and direction and gear numbers 2000 I'll set acorn uh, counts per rev to 8000 and we should have movement so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other uh, drive they're both going to be set up the same, but I just wanted to give you a brief uh, uh, look at uh, a quick and dirty setup of the DYN4 drive.